This is where my 3D printer lives. And the software I'm gonna show you. This is the first time I, I'm working with OBS and the camera and, and 3D printer and everything. So bear with me, I'm not used to it. Now, this 3D printer is connected. Can I see that? Through this power plug, it's now on. Now it's off. You can see that on the LEDs that lit up and this voltmeter that's directly connected to the output of this power supply and it's giving 12.77. The ramps right here, I think it's a 1.3 ramps, I can't remember, it's years ago. It's a 12 volt uh, uh, board, but it can survive 15 volts, up to 15 volts, which I a lot do, like so. I'll show you that. I always have a screwdriver here to fiddle in this power supply on this uh, pot, I turn it and I go up to 15 plus. So that is because my heat bed is very slow to heat up and that's why I a lot of times ramp up that voltage to 15 volts. The previous power supply was 12 volts and I could ramp it up up to almost 15, 14.8 volts, but that broke. <laughs> it's a rated 12 volts, so, and I was always using it at 14 volts. When I'm printing PLA, I'm just about, just under the 13 volts. This power supply now is rated for 16 volts, so even 18 volts, I think. Wait, I'll check it for you. No, it's a 15 volts. 15 volts, if you boost it up, up to 15.3, 15.4, it's never gonna break. What else? I placed an LED on the top here. Can I show you that? Here, I placed an LED directly in the power supply. It's very nice. I had to do that a lot sooner. Also put the button between the main power. I used to uh, print on glass, on a glass bed, but now I'm printing on fiberglass. Mainly because it's sticking, for, for me it's sticking better on a normal 12 volt heat bed. I need to clean this, normally it looks like this, nice and shiny. I use this quite a bit. Also, what I do with this bed, Always, all, all, always, also with glass, I'm not putting cap on tape on that because firstly it's expensive, it's a real hassle, it's really annoying, you always get a bump left or right, so no, I stopped using that. Here I'll show you the cap on tape, it's like uh, that yellow tape that you find in old electronics, it's heat resistant. And yeah, whatever. And then you place it right in the heating bed. It's the same size, approximately. Yeah, it's actually the same size. And you stick it on your bed. And this one really works really great. It sticks to your bed really good. If you need to print really small pieces, then I, 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 I pass a little piece of captain tape where I'm gonna print. And that's perfect. But if you have this size, taped to this, this bed and you print a lot, this doesn't last long. long. It, it's, it's broken really fast. You need to cool it down to room temperature, maybe even colder, you need to put it in your freezer, whatever. And then always, it's always, it's most of the time, it still sticks to the bed really hard. So you need to pull it with force and you break the captain tape and then you need to clean it and you need to Best new Captain Ted. No, I'm, I'm true with it. I hate it. I never use it again. Okay, I'll show you my way. And I think it's a great way. You can see on this plate that it seems dirty, but actually, that's plastic. So I have filament right here. 
this ABS because I still gonna print in ABS. I have a little can here. I have this self-guided thinner which I gonna pour in that little can from a, a spray can. Be aware because some spray cans have a little hole in them. You pour it yeah, half in this size of can, one fourth, a little bit more than one fourth. Take your plastic, you cut it in little pieces, but please don't do like I do. Use uh, garbage that went off your printer. Felt pieces, broken off pieces. And then you're gonna throw all the, this uh, ABS in this little can within the thinner. So, that's quite a bit. And now you let it dissolve, the plastic. Once that's dissolved, you get a little combination of thinner and plastic. The thinner level is gonna drop a little bit, so you have more plastic then thinner and then when it's uh, dissolved you just strike your bed with a very thin layer of uh, the thinner which still is thinner with the ABS inside the mix of the thinner and the ABS and then you have a very small film of ABS with uh, thinner. The thinner is going to dissolve, it's going to go away once you heat the bed. This is how I do it. Not touching these clips again. Okay, now the most important part, is my printer working? Let's connect, and it seems it's not. Oh, I've set it at 250,000 uh, baht. If, if you get this kind of shiny text, try another baht first. I am connected. Home at the Y axis is working. Now I need to know the Z axis. It's going to be a lot different because my uh, hot end is a lot longer. I don't know. If that's even visible, yeah, it is visible. This is my end cap for the Z axis. My end switch, I'll say. This is my adjustable knob. It's a, a little screw that I can go, let go up and down. It's not the most accurate, but it's working for me. This needs to go up quite a bit. Okay, let's make it go home at the z-axis and hope it doesn't touch the heating bed. Which it's gonna do right now. This needs to go up even more. Something like here so. Lock it here in place. Let's make it 
go home. Ooh. It's on the bed. It's normally not really the worst thing because it's not it's just its own weight that's pressing on the bed, so no biggie. So I need to lower the screw and make it go home again. No, it's kind of okay. So I need a little piece of paper. This is quite thick paper, so that's the distance I want between the bed and the hot end. Let's check it. Needs to go a little bit up. And now we're gonna calibrate. That's quite good. That's quite good. Normally it's taking a lot longer. Let's make it go in the middle to the Z home. Yeah, that's not uh, really very good. This is quite good. This is perfect. Let's raise it. Let's go home. Check the home position in the Z axis. The bed is not 100% level. I can tell you that. Needs to go a little bit down. I'm gonna do that later. Now it's most, it's almost perfect. But I wanna know if my hot end is reading the right temperature. My bed is 25 and ex extruder is 25 around room temperature. Let's set the heat at ABS heat for the extruder. It's 230 degrees. It is getting hot, so the hot end is working. Great. I want to set it at 100 first. Let's check. It's now at 120. And it shoots a little bit through. Let's check it. I hope you can see that here. It's hot that means it is reading 85 and in real it is reading 85 but it's reading 108 so that's 20 percent off at least I'll let it go under 100 and let it fire up again it's 100.6 oh it's actually, actually um, pulsing I don't like that about this uh, 
Yeah, it's the best what you can do the pulsing to, to keep the heat at, at a certain level, but I don't know. I kind of want my old firmware back. I think I know stepped stepped over to Merlin, but yeah. So we are at 100 exactly. Trying to find the hottest point on this hot end. 70. How did I gonna try this side? Uh, 70.9. On this side, 65, 65, 70, 70 is my measurement. So that's 30, 30 degrees difference. I've used a new thermistor. That's all I can do. Eh? The rest is uh, so it's software based. I'm gonna cut off this camera.